Although Spain avoided the bloodbath of the Great War, it was embroiled in conflicts of its own in the first half of the 20th century. Spanish military officers pushed for a conquest strategy of North Africa to overcome the decline of the country. Expansion through the Reef region led to the establishment of the Spanish protectorate in Morocco and conflict with the local population. In 1911, for the first time in its history, Spain used armored vehicles during military operations. The Rifians revolted and inflicted a humiliating defeat on the Spanish forces at Annual in the summer of 1921. Despite the eventual success in Africa, the dictatorial regime did not last long. By 1930, the progressive and revolutionary opposition to the system began organizing. The municipal elections on April 14, 1931, saw victories for Republican parties in most of the major cities, leading to the proclamation of the Republic. Tang Encyclopedia magazine issue number 6 is out. As usual, all the articles are well researched by our excellent team of writers and are accompanied by beautiful illustrations and photos. If you love tanks, this is the magazine for you. Hello, my name is Tony, and today we will have a look at the vehicles used by the Second Spanish Republic. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tang Encyclopedia content. Any help will be greatly appreciated. Despite the constant warfare in Africa, the equipment which the Spanish army had at its disposal was aging and antiquated. Conflict between branches of the armored forces also created problems. Most of the vehicles available were veterans of the conflict in the Rift. 13 Renault FTs, 6 Schneider CA1s, and a number of domestically produced armored cars known as Camiones Protegidos Modelo 1921 or Protected Glories Model 1921 or M21. In addition, there were four Modelo Trubio Serie A tanks, Spain's first domestically produced tanks. Initially, a revolutionary committee took over as a provisional government of the newly proclaimed Second Spanish Republic. This government would oversee the process of redacting the new constitution and the first elections. The five main difficulties it faced were regional, religious, military, agrarian, and social. The military reform aimed to reduce the number of divisions to eight and decrease the number of officers by demotions, the freezing of promotions, and the retiring of generals. The reforms also brought the armed forces under civilian supervision. After only a few months in charge, the provisional government had made an enemy of the three most powerful and conservative elements in Spanish society, the Catholic Church, the army, and large landowners. The first election in June 1931 resulted in a victory for the Social Democrats, but with a very divided parliament. The government, under Prime Minister Azania, managed to pass a number of its key radical reforms. The first two years of the Second Republic were marred by internal struggle. Whilst different factions took part in strikes, demonstrations, and general public disorder, it was the anarchists that were most prominent demanding a true anarcho-communist revolution instead of a bourgeois reforms. The anarchists attempted several uprisings in December 1931 to January 1932 and January 1933. There was also a coup attempt by the former head of the Guardia Civil, General José Hanjurjo, in August 1932. Public instability led to new elections for November 1933. A unified right defeated the divided left. However, over the next two years, due to clashes between factions leaving and joining the government, a total of eight governments were formed. The first hurdle the recently formed government had to overcome was a new anarchist insurrection in December 1933. The new government overturned most of the previous government's radical reforms. Following their fall from government in 1933, radical progressive forces had begun to lose faith with the parliamentary route to power and began to talk about an armed revolution. Following a change of government, a revolutionary general strike was called for October 5, 1934. The strike was supported countrywide, but only in Asturias was there an armed uprising. Catalonia declared itself an independent state. Both ultimately failed. After the failed revolution of October 1934, a number of more conservative decisions were taken. Nevertheless, tensions between the parties of the coalition increased, leading to the downfall of several governments and the impossibility of agreeing on policy, 
including a reform on the constitution. In October or September 1935, two corruption scandals brought down the government, and elections were called for February. The multiple uprisings of the first four years of the republic demonstrated the need for a dedicated riot vehicle. Among the vehicles considered were the following. In 1932, Sociedad Española de Construcción Naval built a prototype of an armored truck for riot duties. It was armed with a water cannon and a large water tank at the rear. Only one prototype was built. In September 1934, an armored car for police duties offered by Hispano Suiza was ordered for production. Between 5 and 15 vehicles, known as the Hispano Suiza MC36, were built. It was a large vehicle with a powerful 107 horsepower engine with a turret armed with a machine gun. The vehicle chosen was the Carro Blindado Bilbao Modelo 1932. It was tall and had a fully rotating turret armed with a machine gun. 26 were destined for police forces, 2 were left unattached, and 12 were given to the Army's Cannon Armed Car Group, which had been looking for a suitable vehicle since 1931. The Guardia Civil designed an armored car known as the Blindado Oteza, similar to the Hispano Suiza MC36. It was designed on a General Motors Corporation chassis, had a small fixed turret, and was armed with two machine guns. It is unlikely that more than one was ever built, and little is known of what became of it. The Trubia Serie A had been Spain's first indigenous tank design. Due to tensions within the military, the project was killed off after only four had been built. In spite of this, two of its creator, Victor Landesa Domenic and Rogelio Areces, did not give up and created a tractor for agricultural and military use which was used by the Spanish army in small numbers. In 1934, Landesa Domenech and Areces proposed an armed and armored version of their tractor, but neither the military nor civilian authorities showed interest. Two Landesa tractors in the Trubia factory were converted into tanks and took part in the fighting during the October 1934 revolution. In 1936, Landesa Domenech and Areces designed the ambitious Carro de Combato Ligero para Infanteria Modelo 1936. This light tank was to be armed with a 40mm gun and a machine gun. The most striking part of the design was its armor, made up of conventional and composite armor. Despite interest, the project did not succeed. At the February 1936 elections, the Frente Popular, a coalition of left and progressive forces, won the elections. The new government tried to reverse many of the policies the previous government had themselves overturned. As soon as the election results had been announced, anti-Republican right-wing politicians and the military began to orchestrate a coup not only to remove the elected government but to bring down the republic as a whole. On March 8, 1936, a group of military officers, including Mola, Franco, and several others, met and agreed to a military coup to get rid of the Frente Popular and lead the country as a military junta presided over by Sanjurjo, then in exile in Portugal. Mola, who was in charge of planning the coup, understood that it would not be successful across the whole country and that in the big urban centers there would be plenty of opposition. The killing of a right-wing politician convinced many who were hesitant to support the coup. In the evening of July 17th, troops in the Spanish protectorate of Morocco revolted in Melilla and took over the town. The following day, the coup extended to the peninsula and succeeded in capturing most of Galicia, Old Castile, Navarra, Rioja, Aragon, Extremadura, the Balearic Islands, and cities of Cadiz, Cordoba, Granada, and Sevilla in Andalusia, and surprisingly, the left-wing hotbed of Oviedo. The majority of the army sided with the rebels. Those supporting the coup were initially known as rebels, and those supporting the republican government were known as loyalists. Though the nationalist versus republican dichotomy would soon emerge, 70% of officers sided with the rebels, along with over half of the regular army and non-commissioned officers. Oddly enough, more generals sided with the republic than against it. The Guardia Civil was divided in its loyalties, but notably sided with the rebels, while the Guardia de Asalto remained loyal to the government. After some hesitation. The government decided to arm workers and other citizens to fight for the republic. Thus, for the first few months of the conflict, the army of the republic was a mix of professional soldiers and civilian militias, which also included women. 
These militias were heavily influenced by their political affiliation, some of which clashed or refused to take orders from officers of another political affiliation. The failure of the coup to subjugate the country by deposing the republican government gave way to the bloody civil war. From the onset, armored vehicles were to take a decisive role. In Madrid, Royal Renault FTs saw action fighting rebel infantry and artillery forces. They also fought along with a column of one Schneider CA-1 and two Bilbaos against a rebel arsenal with a large quantity of weapons which the loyalist workers wanted to use. Two Schneider CA-1s and a number of improvised armored vehicles were used against rebel troops in Toledo in the summer of 1936. On July 22, 1936, five Renault FTs took part in the first real battle of the Spanish Civil War, Battle of Guadarrama, north of Madrid. In August 1936, the Republican Renault FTs were used in the failed Republican counterattack on Merida. After this, they fought rebel forces in Extremadura and Andalusia. They also participated in the failed defense of Talavera in early September before being brought back to Madrid to take part in the impending defense of the capital. The early failures to defend the Republic resulted in the appointment of Largo Caballero as Prime Minister, who immediately took measures to reverse the military situation. Up to that point, most military offensives had been carried out by columns of enthusiastic politically motivated militias, which often did not collaborate with those affiliated to other parties or trade unions. The failed naval attack on Mallorca was carried out without its knowledge. Largo Caballero's governments decided to integrate militia units into regular Loyal Army units, creating mixed brigades led by career military men. During August 1936, European countries and the USA drafted a non-intervention agreement prohibiting the sale of weapons to either warring side. Even so, Germany and Italy supported the rebels. Later, the USSR would support the Republic. Initially, to make up for lack of proper armor, workers built rudimentary improvised armored or semi-armored vehicles. Whilst many different designs existed, they all share the same principle of an armored superstructure on top of the chassis of a truck with extra protection at the front, doors to enter and exit the vehicles at the back or sides, and slits along the vehicle to fire from. These vehicles were also covered in slogans denoting the political party or trade unions its builders or users were affiliated to. Cut off from the rest of the Republic, it was in the industrial north where a large number of these vehicles were built. In a bid to counterbalance the advances of Ejercito de Africa, the scant industrial centers of Andalusia and Extremadura produced some very rudimentary titnaus of questionable value. The other majorly industrialized region of the Republican-controlled territory was Catalonia. It is known from official documents that at least 159 titnaus were built between July 1936 and August 1937, so the real numbers are higher. In the Valencia and Murcia region, a large number of vehicles were built, primarily by Union Naval de Levante UNL. In terms of foreign armament, the Republic was able to procure three 37mm armed Renault FT before France closed its border. Through armed traffickers, Spain was able to purchase a number of additional Renault FTs from Poland. The solution to the Republic's lack of modern armament was found in the USSR. The most numerous tank set was the T-26, though so becoming obsolete, it proved to be the most effective tank of the war, in part due to its comparatively thick armor and powerful 45mm gun. A single batch of 50 PT-5s arrived in Spain in August 1937. Despite being the most modern tanks used during the war, they performed terribly and around 40% were lost in their first actions at the Battle of Fuentes del Ebro. This was partially down to their misjudged tactical usage as infantry support platforms. An unknown number of FAI light armored cars were also sent to the Republic. These performed badly as they had weak armor and poor off-road driving. More successful were the BA-3 and BA-6. Only four BA-3s were sent to Spain, arriving in 1936 alongside 26 BA-6s. More BA-6s were sent throughout 1937, but the exact numbers are unknown. Other vehicles and tractors were sent. 
Alongside the material and replacement pieces for repairs came 2,000 Soviet instructors, military personnel, tank and aircraft crew members, and political commissars who began to implement policies and organize the persecution of moderate Republican and anti-Soviet or anti-Stalin socialists or Marxists. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.